All right, now we're going on to page 13, which is part two, arranging. So you've memorized these different carols with your one, four, and the five, seven chord. And now we're gonna start doing some different things. Here's an exercise right here on page 14, uh, practicing with using thirds for the chords in the right hand. Because once you know your tunes, we wanna gradually start getting the harmony up into your right hand. And one of the most common ways that you harmonize with your right hand are to do it with thirds or six. Now right here on this exercise, you'll see the first thing it does is to play a root position F, a root position B flat, and a root position C7, and then another F. So it's looking like this. And your left hand is going to play the root, so you can see how they go together. And once you get that, then you see this little pattern here where you're playing you, you think root position, you think an F chord, but you're going bottom two, top two, you think a B flat chord, bottom two, top two, you think a C7 chord, and you're going to have to get two more notes in. So we have half note, half note, B flat, bottom two, top two, bottom two, middle two, top two, top two, bottom two. So you get that until you can play it fairly easily. Now the exercise below that is in minor which eventually you want to do that in the minor also, but not yet. And once you get comfortable with that, you can do this little exercise where you practice putting passing tones in. Which are non-chord tones, between chord tones, going in the same direction. So here, these two notes are passing tones. And these two patterns are the chord. You see how that's in that chord. There's the C chord. And eventually you're going to do more with that, adding uh, upper neighbors. Something like that, and lower neighbors, and so on. But first you want to just get that, the hang of that. All right, then on the next page, we're going from the thirds to the sixth. And the first way you can work with that is doing the inversions of these chords. First inversion, second inversion of the F chord. B flat, first inversion, second inversion. Now the C7 is a little bit harder, so you may or may not be able to get all these notes in here, but, but here it is in closed position. C7, 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 back to F in first inversion. And actually, the sixths are easier to play than worrying about all those notes. But as when we played the thirds, you note that you had root third, third fifth. If we flip it over, instead of having root third, we're going to have third root. Instead of having third fifth, we're going to have fifth third. So they're just upside down. So now I've got my sixth. And see how you've just outlined the F chord? F, A, C. Then the B flat, B flat, D, F. Then the C chord is actually easier with just the sixth. All you have to think at the top here is that, oh, okay, my little finger's playing C, E, G, C, E, G, and back to F. So that's going. And at the bottom of that page, you also see, once you get comfortable, you're going to play a little bit with the passing tones. Now, also, you'll see here on this last measure here, the 5-7 has several additional intervals. Generally, when you're harmonizing like this, you can only play a third or a sixth. Nothing else will work, except on the dominant, where you can play the seventh and the root, the seventh and the third, the root and the seventh, or the third and the seventh. But otherwise, you're going to be using just thirds and sixths. So the very example on the bottom, all six. But now we're going to come down and use, there's that fifth, there's a third, there's that fourth. And you just do what you can handle of this so far. But then we go to O Harmonious Tree. So once you've done that sixth exercise, it's not going to be so hard to do it in a piece. And right here you see that, okay, our melody is being harmonized with a six below. It happens that this works all the way through this section. The truth is, if a third doesn't work, a sixth will. If a sixth doesn't work, a third will. And sometimes they both will. If I did thirds here, that's the 
that's going to throw me out of the harmony. What if I do six? That just happens that all of this works. So you get that in your hand. And of course, you're first going to practice. Then you might even practice doing thirds. Uh, and you won't have a good fingering for this yet, so you just do whatever you can hit. Now we're still playing the same chord progression. One, five, one, five, one, okay? So here's our six. And in the left hand you can play either just the root, or the root in the fifth, or root in an octave. Just fill in basically a root or a root in a fifth. happens to work perfectly with thirds and not so well with six because then you get a seventh thrown in there now for this this little part right here you want to start with the fingers two and four because that will allow you to play that whole pattern then you go to two and four on the next group then you're back to the sixth Try to go to silent night and do. Oh, let's see. Can I do thirds? What about six? Oops. No. Thirds. Okay, six work there. Thirds do, but not quite as well because there's too much space there. But they work. Now here, thirds don't work. Now here. So we've got um, then you have to come back to the third here. Then the four section works very nicely with and of course this makes it very easy for your alto singers to sing this. Now here's a good place to use the extra positions. of things you can play thirds and sixths with. And that always sounds a little bit richer than uh, if you're just playing this. Now on page 17 and 18, you have exactly the same exercise, the thirds and the sixths, but in the key of G instead of in the key of uh, F. So you'll practice those until you can get that one. You do it the same way we did the other one. Locked chords them up. Bottom two, top two, bottom two, top two, bottom two, middle two, top two, top two, bottom two. Then you go to the six, which is just turned upside down. Now here, if you just think D, F sharp, A, just think the top note, and you'll get that D, F sharp, A, G. Then the other intervals you have on the dominant or... we're going to apply that to a way and a manger which works really really nicely with those thirds and sixths and this is page 20 and you see how that looks we're also doing some slightly different bass combinations like an open fifth or an octave with a fifth and these are just suggestions the whole point of this whole book is so that you can realize you can do lots of different things and you don't always have to do it the same now I'm sort of skipping page 19 for the moment, which 
talks about playing the two chord but over the subdominant of the key of four cadence at the ending. Right here you've got an A minor chord but it's over a C which is the third of the chord and then another funny little chord for the 5-7. And so here you've got thirds work right here. You need sixth here. Thirds work there. Now here's a place where you do the And also at the bottom of the page, uh, showing that ending with the two chord, you can see it also in the key of F. So you've got... 